welcome to lecture 3. In the last class, we were looking at the equivalence between full rate sampling and time interleaved sampling. The motivation to consider time interleaved sampling is those applications where implementing a full rate sample and hold may just not be possible. So, just like if you are not able to work hard enough, you hire more people to do the same job. Here, the idea is to use two sample and holds sampling at half the rate and working in parallel and somehow you stitch the outputs together in order to get an output sequence, which is what the full rate sample and hold would have given. You understand? And uh, so, as shown here, this is the equivalent of the full rate sample and hold, right. And this shown below is a mathematical equivalent of time interleaved sampling. Please note the words mathematically equivalent, physically it will not be implemented like this, okay. What makes more sense to implement in, uh, in practice is that the top sample and hold channel will be sampling at all even multiples of the sampling rate, uh, sampling clock period and the bottom channel will be sampling at all odd multiples of the sampling period which is is t. Okay. Uh, to analyze it does not make a difference if we have a mathematical equivalence which is why I simplified things by sampling both of them at the same instant of time. However, one is artificially been advanced by a time t and uh, if we put this whole contraption inside a box, the system inside the green box should in principle be not distinguishable from a full rate sample and hold, right. And uh, during the last class, we wrote down the expressions for spectra at various places in the system. Uh, what are important are let us get some more intuition on this by uh, uh, actually plotting the spectrum. Last time we had equations for the various spectra. Let us now plot and get some intuition. Uh, Let us just quickly remind ourselves what is the maximum bandwidth of the continuous time input signal x of t which will allow us uh, perfect reconstruction. I mean please note also that we in the last class we denoted 1 by t by by f s correct. So, let us quickly remind ourselves again what is the maximum bandwidth of x of t which will allow us to enable perfect reconstruction f s by 2 all right. And in the interleaved sampling system what are we sampling each channel at? No, 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 no. Please note this signal x of t can have a maximum bandwidth of f s by 2 and in each in these in this interleaved channel each of these channels is sampling at what rate? It is also sampling at f s by 2 you understand. So, the signal so as far as the each of these channels is concerned the input signal bandwidth is f s by 2 and the sampling rate is also f s by 2. So, what do you think happens in each of these individual channels? They will be aliasing in each of these individual channels. However, from end to end we saw that the system is, e <coughs> is equivalent to a sampling system operating at f s. So, if there is aliasing happening here and aliasing happening in the lower channel, but when you add the two, if it is equivalent to something where there is no aliasing, what must be happening? What must be happening is somewhere along the line, the alias components are cancelled. Okay. So, let us uh, simply uh, uh, you know take a look at the spectra and, and plot them again uh, and plot them this time. Last time we saw this through the maths, let us actually draw pictures and convince ourselves that that is indeed happen. Okay. So, 
uh, can uh, somebody please remind me what uh, we called these to be consistent with notation used last time uh, what did we call this point okay so this was called point c all right uh, what about uh, this point g for god okay so we call this g and uh, what did we uh, i guess we must have called this a then and then b c d e f and g and h is the final output is that right okay so i'm not going to go over all the math again at c the spectrum must be of the form 1 by 2 t sum over all k x of f s by 2 pi times omega minus pi k. And at G, we saw last time that the spectrum is 1 by 2 t sigma over all k x of f s by 2 pi times omega minus pi k times e to the power j. minus j k pi does it make sense these are results that we derived the last time around so now let's uh, let's sketch these how do you uh, let us say this was the continuous time signal and let us assume that the continuous time signal is occupies the entire f s by 2 right. So, if this signal was ideally sampled at f s then there would be no aliasing correct. However, how does how does this look like? it is shifted by. So, uh, let us remind ourselves again if this signal was sampled at f s what would the discrete time spectrum look like? What do we do to get from continuous time to discrete time? This is a continuous time signal first you make copies and paste at what intervals at f s right. So, if we had sampled the original signal at f s this is what we would have got okay. and then we replace the x axis with we scale the x axis we multiply this by you know 1 over t and we scale the x axis. So, what does f s by 2 become? f s by 2 becomes pi, this becomes minus pi and so this becomes 3 pi, 5 pi and so on. Right? What is this? In the discrete time domain this is what we would have got this is omega minus 2 pi k this is stuff that we already know okay but what is this expression what is the difference i mean what is the difference between this expression and this expression one is repeated at 2 pi whereas the other one is repeated at 
at pi. So, how do you think this expression will look like? You will have aliasing terms now repeated at you will have images repeated at pi. Okay. So, you will have So, this corresponds to the spectrum at sorry at C. Is that clear? Now, I need to find this or draw the spectrum at G, but before we go there please note that indeed we see aliasing in the top channel right the spectrum at c itself is alias and this makes sense because the signal bandwidth is fs by 2 and we are sampling at fs by 2 now let's draw the spectrum at uh, g and to do that i will copy and paste what is the only difference between the spectrum at c and the spectrum at g the ones which you have shifted by pi are now inverted in sign so instead of having I am sorry Does it make sense? Here also we note that there is aliasing, correct? Because the sum of the spectra is is the black guy plus the red guys. Okay. So there is aliasing in both channels. However, when you add C and G together, what is happening? the uh, step and repeat happening at odd multiples of pi get cancelled whereas, those at the even multiples of pi reinforce each other and what we get eventually is this and we also understand that this strength is 1 by 2 t, this strength is also 1 by 2 t. So, when you add these two, the strength will be at well, proportional to 1 by t and you get the result at h 
is a spectrum like this, which is what we expected in the first place, given that this whole system is equivalent to a system which samples at rate f s. Is this clear? Now, the next thing is to figure out what happens when there are non idealities here. So, let me copy this again. As I said, a practical realization of this approach would basically have two sample and holes, one sampling at all odd multiples of t and one sampling at all even multiples of t, then you have these two sequences and you interpolate it up by a factor of 2 by inserting zeros, then move one of the sequences by one sample and add the two. Okay. There are several practical non idealities which come in, which we never accounted for in the derivation. For one, as I mentioned that day, the signal is passing through different channels and each channel can add offset. In other words, the output here for example, is not simply the sampled output plus some offset, which we denote by v offset 1 and v offset 2. Right. So, the first non ideality we consider is offset. Now, let us try and understand intuitively what we should expect for the output sequence, if each of these channels had different offsets or before you go to different offsets, maybe we try to figure out what happens when they have the same offset. So, when both of them have the same offset, what do you think will happen to the output? If all the channels have the same offset, then the output will simply be the ideal output plus the offset that each channel is added. Correct? Now, let us try and figure out what happens when the two channels have different offsets. What do you think will happen? How do you think the output will? I mean, let us try and understand this by putting 0 input, right. If you put in a 0 input to the system, ideally, what should you see at the output? Ideally, should we should see 0. If both channels had the same offset, what would you see? You would see a constant DC value of V offset. Now, if both channels had different offsets, V offset 1 and v offset 2, what would you see? So, very good. So, in all even samples, you would see offset 1. 
all right and all odd samples you will see offset 2 mind you the offset stays constant so every alternate samples value will be the same correct so if you look at the sequence what can you decompose this as can you see something in the sequence can you comment on the spectral content of the sequence this is a discrete time sequence please note that this is a discrete time sequence by definition it only exists as a sequence so there's no i mean the so i mean at what frequency so please note this is a discrete time sequence so it is there is there is no you know there is no question of you know frequency is fs you understand that was continuous time after sampling you only have a sequence so whatever frequency you come up with must be within the range 0 to pi correct all right so now can you look at the sequence in general it's very difficult to look at a sequence and tell you and tell, i mean say what its spectral content is unless you have a natural fourier transform inside your eyes you understand okay but for this special simple sequence we should be able to look at it and say and this is one channel offset this is the other channels offset all right and this is v offset 1 this is v offset 2 is this clear v offset is a constant which is added to every sample in that channel correct see if the input was if this input was grounded what would you expect ideally at the output all zeros now what is happening is that each channel is adding a constant but fixed offset i mean it's i'm sorry it's it's constant offset to all samples so in so instead of being instead of the output of this channel on the top being 0 0 0 it is v offset 1 v offset 1 v offset 1 but these are only the even samples this channel on the other hand also adds offset but its offset is not the same as the offset added by the first channel and this can happen in practice due to mismatch in 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 uh, the circuits that are used to implement these uh, systems so let's not worry at this point about where these offsets are coming from and why they are different okay we just take them for granted that this is what would happen in practice now the say the lower channel also adds offset which is v offset 2 v offset 2 v offset set 2 and so on and since we are interleaving this, these two sequences it follows that the output of the composite system when the input is zero will be a sequence like this is this clear to everyone okay now all that i'm saying is that we can think of this sequence as the sum of two sequences one which is the average drawn in the blue squares correct plus another sequence which is what
how does the other sequence look? The difference here I will denote that by triangles. Here, what is the difference in the second sample? Negative. Negative. And these two will have the same magnitude, correct? Because by definition, I have removed the average. Okay. So, so this is the average, which is v offset one plus v offset. 2 by 2 and the amplitude of this sequence, which as we can see is periodic with a period of 2 samples is the peak to peak amplitude is V offset 1 minus V offset 2. Okay. Since the discrete time tone is periodic with two samples, the in the frequency domain it must be at a sinusoid at omega equal to pi. Is this clear? So, now if we trace this back to the continuous time domain for ease in understanding, we can think of this tone at omega equal to pi as coming from a continuous time sinusoid operating at it is like if you see a tone in the discrete time domain at a frequency omega equal to pi that must be coming from a we would normally think that that would be coming from the continuous time input at what frequency f s by 2 correct because if, if we put this whole thing in a black box And we looked at the output sequence, and the output sequence seems to show DC plus a tone at omega equal to pi. And as far as we are concerned, this is coming from a sample and hold operating at a rate of fs, which basically means that the input must be coming from must have a tone at DC as well as fs by 2. In other words, offset in each of these channels will make us believe that the continuous time input has components at f s by 2 as well as d c, while the real continuous time input is 0. So, obviously, this is some kind of error correct, causing us to get confused about the nature of the input in continuous time. All right. Okay. Now, if the input was not 0, what do you think will happen? So, this causes offset and a tone at omega equal to pi, which corresponds to f n equal to f s by 2. Okay. Now, let us discuss what happens when apart from the offsets, there is a regular input coming into the time interlude sampling system. What do you think will happen? What do you think the output sequence will be? Very good. So, if the input was not grounded, but was a regular input that you would normally use, then the output sequence apart from containing the ideal output sequence x of k t would also contain this extra sequence, because this simply adds to whatever was supposed to come out ideally. Correct. So, what is the conclusion now? Therefore, what 
what is the conclusion? Yes, so basically if you have offsets in each of these channels, the output spectrum will be will be the ideal spectrum plus d c offset plus a tone at omega equal to pi all right okay now uh, let us think what would happen if instead of having a two way sample and hold we had a four way sample and hold what do you think will happen to offsets Pardon? Is it only at pi by 2? Very good. So, if you have a four channel sample and hold system, you will see tones due to offset at pi by 4, 2 times pi by 4, 3 times pi by 4, and Oh, actually, I am sorry. No, if uh, what would I say? Well, we assumed what was this? Okay, so I am sorry. If uh, we have a two-channel sample and hold, then we see tones at 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 pi. So, in other words, it's two pi by two. If we have four channels we would see tones at 2 pi by 4 and 2 pi by 2 and as well as d c. You understand? So, in other words if you translate this into the continuous time domain, a two channel system would make it look as if the input contained d c as well as a tone at f s by 2 if you have a four channel system, it will look at like d c f s by 4, f s by 2 and 3 f s by 4 which is the same as f s by 4. Okay. So, in general if you have an n channel sampling system, you will see tones at f s by and its multiples and that makes intuitive sense because every nth sample is the same because the first channel processes the first I mean the first uh, sample it is again exercised only after n after all after you gone through all the other channels. So, you come back every nth sample is the same and the samples from 0 to n minus 1 are all different because they are processed through different channels. So, you can always expand this as a Fourier series with a fundamental period equal to n samples which corresponds to f s by n. Does it make sense? All right. Okay. So, in other words, we already see that using time interleaving has its problems. I mean, nothing comes for free. All right. So we thought we'd make our life easy by using two so slow sample and holds and stitching their outputs together. And we already see that because of offset, there is artifacts in the sampled output which which wouldn't have been there if the sampling rate was f s I mean was it was a true full rate sample is that clear okay now the next non any questions okay the next non ideality is gain error
So, let me again copy this and paste now just like each channel introduces its own offset because these two channels are built using different circuitry though they are nominally identical it will turn out that there will be a small gain error in other words the gains of all the channels will not be the same you understand so let us now consider gain error separately in, a, in, a, in other words the nominal gain is uh, 1 plus alpha and the nominal gain is 1 plus beta in the lower channel. Ideally alpha equal to beta equal to alpha equal to beta equal to 0 both are very very small numbers. In practice alpha will not be equal to beta again because of random mismatch between both the channels. What do you think before we get into the math let us try and understand intuitively what we should expect what do you think will happen. If alpha was equal to beta, what do you think will happen? If alpha is equal to beta, there is no real problem in the sense that it will appear as if the entire sequence of the output is in has a gain error of 1 plus alpha, I mean has an error of gain error of alpha correct because it is like the even samples getting multiplied by a constant 1 plus alpha and the odd samples also getting multiplied by a constant 1 plus alpha. So, when you stitch the two sequences together it is pretty much like the original sequence except that all numbers have been multiplied by this by this extra factor 1 plus alpha. So, there is no real problem. Now, what do you think will happen when alpha is not equal to beta? Very good. So, let us recall that what were we depending on so if the channels had identical gains then we recall that we are adding the spectra at and we understand that each of these sub channels is not sampling at Nyquist. So, there will be aliasing in each of these sub channels however, when we stitch the signals of the sequences together magically the aliases are getting cancelled off correct. Okay. Now, if there was a gain error in both these channels in other words this if you will recall g is the output of the channel on top h is the output at the the spectrum at the output of the lower channel. So, if the gains were different this is 1 by multi getting multiplied by 1 by 2 t into 1 plus alpha whereas, the lower channel is getting multiplied by 1 by 2 t times 1 plus beta is this clear because all that we have done we have already computed the spectra at this point and this point correct. Now, if there was a gain error in this channel it is simply taking the spectrum at c for instance and multiplying it by 1 plus alpha in a similar fashion if there is a gain error in the lower channel it is like to compute the spectrum at g we just take the old spectrum and multiply it by 1 plus beta instead correct. So, so 
instance a picture is worth a thousand words. What were we seeing earlier? If alpha was equal to beta was equal to 0, then which of these components were, which of these colors were was getting cancelled out? The images in red were getting, were cancelling exactly, whereas the images in black were adding up. Now, what do you think will happen? If alpha is not equal to beta, there will be, there will be a red component. In other words, there will be an aliased component. Okay. So, if I So, the strength of the black images will be 1 by t plus 1 by 2 t times alpha plus beta. The red ones, however, will be this is somewhat exaggerated. because the cancellation is not perfect anymore. Does it make sense? Okay. And what will be the height of these images? It will be 1 by 2 t into alpha minus Clearly, when alpha is equal to beta, again the images cancel and there is simply a gain error, correct. But when alpha and beta are not equal, we see that there are alias components. Okay. Now, specifically, if the input consisted of two sinusoids or consisted of, of a sinusoid. What do you think will happen? If the input consisted of a sinusoid, the discrete time spectrum would ideally have done something like this. Okay. Now, what do you think will happen? I mean, I do not really need to extend, I mean draw the periodic extension, because I know it is periodic between minus pi and pi. I am going to get rid of the scaling factor also, just to make the diagram a little clearer. And what else, what other tones would be present? Yeah. So, there would be something here and something there. Correct? So, what is I am sorry, I made a So, if the input was continuous time and 
had a frequency of uh, let me erase and redraw it clearly. I am blowing up just that region between minus pi and pi, what we would have gotten something like this and the red part would have done something like this. This is minus pi, this is pi. Now, what I am asking you is what would happen for the specific case of the input being a, a tone at some frequency f in. right? in which case the input spectrum would for instance look would have two impulses here and if the input was at f in in the discrete time spectrum where would they occur at f in by f s times 2 pi correct and because these alias components do not cancel, they will be something there, all right. And this is f in by f s times 2 pi. What is this distance? Is also f in by f s times 2 pi, correct. So, ideally if we had just a sample and hold running at the full rate, what would which of these colors would you see? Only the spectral component shown in black would appear. Now, because of time interleaving and gain mismatch, we see that there are other artifacts in the spectrum and they are at what frequency at high frequency and what is that high frequency here f s by 2 if this distance is f n by f s times 2 pi it is pi minus f n by f s times 2 pi translated into the continuous time domain it is like having an input tone at so, in continuous time, it is like having f s by 2 minus f. Okay. Or equivalently, you can say it is f s, f n, f s by 2 minus plus f n, because whether you have a tone at f s by 2 minus f n or f s by 2 plus f n, when you sample it at, at, at uh, f s they will you understand. Intuitively why does this make sense is so, if you have a tone at f s by 2 minus f n why uh, can you tell me why does this intuitively make sense. Yes. Sample this f in, f in tone uh -huh. at f s. Yes. Would the aliasing would happen exactly at f in by f s by two minus f in? Mm. I mean, how is it that? I mean, the question I'm trying to get at is, how is it that if you sample this? a sinusoidal tone at a frequency f in with a single channel sampling at the rate f s, we see only these two tones in black. 
However, when you, we use a two channel sample and hold with gain mismatch, we see additional tones. Please note that the, the amplitude or the strength of these tones is proportional to alpha minus beta, correct. So, why does this make sense? Yes. Aliasing is happening. Correct. Because there is a gain mass match. Uh, they are not cancelling. cancelling. All right. I mean, uh, you know, uh, that is the math in, in, in words, but is there uh, more intuition to this than. Uh, so, there is a multiplication of a tone at uh, f in and uh, I mean some frequency components at f s by 2 and multiples of that. So, multiplication in uh, time domain is nothing but uh, in frequency domain we will have uh, the sums and differences of those frequency components. Uh -huh. So, here uh, because f is like 2 and f in other, we have some difference. Well, you are kind of there, but uh, uh, let us see. So, if you think of what is really happening, right, ideally we were expecting let us say some sequence. The crosses correspond to <coughs> one. one channel and the circles correspond to the other. This is let us say the ideal sequence expected out of the whole system. Now, because of gain error, what is happening? Every odd sample is getting multiplied up by some constant which is different from unity and every even sample is multi getting multiplied by another constant which is not the same as the constant which is multiplying the odd samples. So, you can think of this as taking this ideal sequence and multiplying it by a sequence which is you understand what is this sequence? This is the ideal output. The actual output can be thought of as taking the ideal output and multiplying it by a sequence where the even samples are 1 plus alpha and the odd samples are 1 plus beta, correct. And just now we said that this kind of sequence, what is the spectral content? It consists of DC and a tone at, at pi, which in the continuous time domain maps to f s by 2. So, if you take a sequence and multiply it by another sequence, which has got both a constant term and a tone at pi, what would you expect for the output sequence? You will see sum and difference of in a tone, the tone at pi will beat with the input tone and give you the sum and difference. You understand? That is why it makes sense that you see components at, I mean we see the original spectrum plus some components at pi minus f in by f s times 2 pi. The intuition is that you multiply the ideal sequence with a sequence which has got a constant value plus a tone at omega equal to pi, which is why you see other artifacts. Now, taking this further to an n channel system, what do you think we will see? You will have uh, n, n minus 1 components. <coughs> BC. So, uh, if n equal to 2, we have components around f s by 2, correct. If you have n equal to 4, you will have components around f s by 
f s by 4 right and its multiples you understand is this clear. So, we will stop here for today and we will continue tomorrow.